Hi, Rainey here with the American School of Hypnosis. Have you ever wished that you could travel to a past life to see who you were, what you did, or even to learn from the past? Well, what I have here in this video are testimonials from lots of people who traveled to a past life in one of our recent group sessions we did in class. So go ahead and listen to this video and if you'd like to learn more about how to conduct past life regression sessions on your own, be sure to click on the link below for our upcoming virtual live past life regression course on Zoom that we have coming up and you'll be able to conduct group sessions and get results just like the ones you're going to see here. Thanks for watching. I had an impression of, I guess it would be a stone altar. It felt like a stone altar, but there were flowers on top of it. You know, it, it, felt, it felt very, very peaceful. My name was Amelia. Um, they called me Lady Amelia. I was 23 and I was pregnant. But I was in a room with a this this hewn table because I could see that the grain of the wood going through it and it was it was really thick. I was standing up. There was two women. One was across from me, and there was one on the corner. And the one on the corner had on this headdress that had like beads coming from the top, and there were beads around her neck. And some of the beads were going down her shoulder because I was looking at the beads. And she looked at me and she said for me to, she said for me to cast her words because I could make it work. So I smiled, I turned around and then, and I was in my, I was in my room looking out that little slender window, looking at the garden, a bunch of people, um, crashed into the room. They were guards or somebody, but there was a bunch of them. And the lady with the beads was in front of them. And she was pointing at me. And I remember I was calm. I was very calm. I wasn't pregnant anymore. Um, and the thought was, what happened to the baby? But I was very, very calm. And then the next thing I remember, I was back at the bridge talking to the guardian. And what the guardian was telling me was um, that it was safe for me to talk now. Don't be afraid to talk. And she pulled a Band-Aid. She pulled a Band-Aid from my throat. And there was, a, there was a slit. But it was golden light coming out of it. And she said, don't be afraid to talk. But be mindful. Use your own words. And I understood, I understood what she meant at the time. Now it's a little, a little wonky, but I, I kind of understood what she was saying. Um, maybe, I think, not I think, what I feel is when the guardian took the Band-Aid off my throat, it's okay for me to talk now. Don't be afraid of it. With the, with the bridge, it actually, I had a vision of a guard almost like Gandalf until you changed the, the robes to brown, which took Gandalf out of the picture and actually uh, had a vision of my mother who has, who has passed quite a long time ago. And so um, it was interesting when you said about the protection, it was like in my head, I heard her said, I, I'm always here to protect you. I've always protected you, which I thought was pretty cool. And uh, so I continued walking and I had a vision of being on a beach and I turned around, it was a New England beach, with the old uh, gray houses on the rocky, you know, kind of like a rocky beach. It was probably maybe a hundred years ago, roughly. And then when I walked up to the house, I was sitting outside in a, an old, um, I don't even know if they had them at the time, the, um, uh, what are the chairs? The... Um, the wooden chairs. An Adirondack type Adirondack. Yeah. Adirondack chair. And then there was a little girl next to me. And uh, she was my uh, my niece, actually. And then we fast forwarded. Um, I was in my, I guess, 50s, standing in a similar home. Um, and this around the, you know, fast forward like 20 years in a library. Not quite sure what I was doing there or what was the purpose of it. And then uh, when it came to death, 
um, looked like it was in the early 60s, laying in a four-poster bed. No distress, but it was some kind of an acute illness. But I can't say it was flu or pneumonia or anything because there was no respiratory issues. It was just kind of whatever I had, we knew I was going to succumb to it with no, no distress. And um, there was somebody standing there, and I believe it was a... Uh, she was my sister, but she looked like my aunt that I had in real life. So mm -hmm. that was best, basically it as far as message or anything um, or regrets. I guess it was kind of like having been a bystander and not being fully engaged. So to take that back, and which was kind of like the way I am now, so it wasn't too far-fetched. And uh, just to keep that in mind because that was yeah. like the major regret. So that was that. Uh, before, before I started to imagine, I thought that I will be imagining something else. <laughs> but what I imagine, it was that I was in a room full of writers, you know? They were writing on the machine the typing, typing machine. And it was like I was dictating something to them. And I was smoking. I was a smoker. And it was like, it was very serious what was going on there. I don't know what, but I was kind of very serious guy and with black shoes and black suit and red ties dark red right and my name was albert and and second time i went to another place uh, the first time i was 52 years old and second time i was 65 years old i was in a office full of bookcases there and and when i i was there i thought that i went there to make some feedback to someone you know like maybe going to meet the president or i don't know something like that but uh i realized that i was the only one person there i i couldn't see that guy that person and then when you say go out and see something, when I went out, it was like I was in a hotel somewhere, I don't know. And then I went there and found the stairs and I saw many employees or something like this waiting for me, I don't know for what, right? And then third place, I was 85 years old on my bed and I was dying. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and but I, I, I don't think that I was sick or something. I was old. Okay. Right? And, and yeah, some people were there and like, I don't know, they, they were waiting for me to, to, to pass away. And I think one guy was a doctor when you said to look at the people at the first place where I was I thought about my actual wife but it's like she was also typing what I was dictating you know so I didn't uh, talk to her closely like this because there were many 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 people there typing something I, I was not expecting this. I, I before I thought maybe I will find myself in a forest somewhere doing something very dangerous. Yeah. And in the, the first time I had a, I couldn't see my body. It was at night. It was in a forest, and I was hunting. I know I was hunting, and I was not human. I was an animal. An animal. I suppose a wolf or something like that. It felt great because I had. I really felt much stronger. 
I felt it was a, a strange sensation. It was a little bit different. Everything was different. I perceived things differently. But I could really feel the strength and the, and the power of, of the, the wildness. I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. Even though it was a bit strange, it was, yeah, the, the night and, the, and the, the atmosphere was, I wouldn't like have, I wouldn't have liked to meet myself as a person that night. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was really hunting. <laughs> At first I was on a, a, a ship of some sort. It was more like a, um, um, like a ferry. Like you were going from one place to the other, the one the kind of ferry it might have cars on it, and then I transitioned into I couldn't tell if I was in an airplane or if I was just kind of floating through the sky. It was very pleasant, a very pleasant feeling, and then I transitioned back. I couldn't see myself, but I was in a harbor where I was looking up at these huge ships, like the big tankers and transport ships. And then uh, I transitioned to a place where it was like an underground dwelling. Uh, there were a lot of people there, and this was more like the death scene. And no one spoke to me. No one even looked. They, they all kind of were sitting up doing their own thing. But I felt a sense of anxiety, nothing great, just some anxiety. And then the, um, the next port we were coming back, and when I got back to the bridge, I did see the guardian. Uh, we didn't speak to each other, but uh, you know, there was a very pleasant feeling. And then when coming back down through the hallway to the present time, it was more like I was just kind of in a dream state, kind of floating like state. So that's about it. I experienced, uh, you ever. Uh, yeah, vibration. It was like a thrusting um, every so often, like three or four times during the session as you're like making it through something like the surface of, uh, I don't know, jello. Um, but um, I didn't see a face with the, the Guardian. Um, I, uh, I think I was in Chicago. I've never been to Chicago before. And I was in a suit. Um, I was a a, a loner but I, a lot of people were attracted to me um like i had a following or something um it was hot and i started sweating um it was like summertime it was like 1920s 30s um my name was uh reginald everyone called me reggie um the uh I got sick, uh, I found it hard to breathe. I think I had a, uh, a lung issue. I was very weak. Um, and I think that's how I passed away. And uh, my regret was some lady named Sally. Uh, I was a man about 50 years old. Uh, when she asked how tall I was, I thought around six feet. Uh, long bushy white hair, long bushy beard and mustache, I, all hair up here, <laughs> brown hat with a floppy, be, uh, floppy brim, uh, and I had, uh, I'd say what well, was robes, but it looked like there was two layers at the bottom, so I don't know, I couldn't tell if I had a cape on or not, but there was two layers at the bottom. Um, brown sandals, leather. Uh, okay, and I um, I seem to appear, like when she told us what were we seeing, I seem to be at the edge of a village. And the village, the houses had thatched roofs. I felt like I was in the 1500s, but I couldn't get a specific date. Mm -hmm. uh, I was walking along. It was just a, as I walked through the village, it was just a, a dirt path. And I could see oxen and children running and playing and having fun. Uh, I felt like I was, like they, they were happy to see me and would wave and everything, but I wasn't of them. I was kind of an outsider loner of uh, my choice. Um, 
And then when we moved, I think that was it. Yeah. Oh, and there was hills in the background. Um, and then when we moved up further in age, I thought probably about 55 or 60. I didn't go very far ahead. But I was in my house, which was in those hills, and I was cooking a, uh, a meal outside. It was a cauldron over on a tripod over a camp, over an outside fire. There was a cave beside, I had just had a small house and there was a cave beside it. I don't know at that time, didn't know what the cave was for, still don't really. But I was feeling very content and happy with my life. And then when we took to the death scene, I was laying on a cot and I could see a table. It felt really cozy, but the cot seemed to be in an alcove of some sort and it looked like a rock wall. So I'm thinking I'm, maybe I was in that cave. And uh, when I reflected on my life, I just felt happy and content. And I felt that people had respect for me, but they, and they viewed me as an advisor of some sort. And when I went back over the bridge and talked to my guardian, the advice given by the guardian was follow your own guidance. Don't let others talk you out of what you know is right for you.